Hello everybody. Let's talk about the extrahepatic biliary apparatus. So this is a pretty simple and straightforward topic and we will be seeing the components of the extrahepatic biliary apparatus in this first video. So basically the biliary apparatus can be classified into an intrahepatic biliary apparatus and an extrahepatic biliary apparatus and their main function is to transport the bile produced in the bile canaliculi within the liver to the duodenum to aid in digestion. So the intrahepatic biliary apparatus is this part and this collects the bile produced in the bile canaliculi and once it is collected this bile is transported outside via the extrahepatic biliary apparatus. So basically it consists of structures that receive bile from the liver that store bile temporarily in the gallbladder and they deliver bile to the second part of the duodenum as and when required. Now let's see the components one by one. So basically this is the extrahepatic biliary apparatus, a beautiful diagram from Netters and the first component is the right and the left hepatic ducts, are the right and the left hepatic ducts. These hepatic ducts join together to form the common hepatic duct. Now after the common hepatic duct we have a certain uh, sac on its right side which is called the gallbladder here. And the gallbladder attaches to the common hepatic duct via its own duct, which is the cystic duct over here, right? And then we have both of them joined together. So the common hepatic duct, when it joins with the cystic duct, results in what is called the common bile duct. And that is what enters into the second part of the duodenum, all right? So now let's see the right and the left hepatic duct. So they start from the right and the left lobes of the liver and they emerge through what is called the porta hepatis, which is a region in the undersurface of the liver where all these structures entering, which is something like the hilum of the liver. So structures enter as well as leave the liver through the porta hepatis. And then once it leaves the porta hepatis, it almost immediately fuses. These two almost immediately fuse to form the common hepatic duct, which continues down and which is our next component. So the common hepatic duct is around 1 inch. 2.5 centimeters in length and it is joined on its right side by the cystic duct and henceforth it is now called it changes its name and now it's called the common bile duct so it is the same tube once the cystic duct joins in it becomes the common bile duct now the gallbladder and the cystic duct let's talk about them so the gallbladder is a pear-shaped viscous or a sac and it is located in a structure called the gallbladder fossa. We will be seeing the gallbladder and the cystic duct in some detail in a later video and it has a capacity of around 50 ml. Remember our 25 ml glass from the previous ascites class? I will be posting the link below so you can check that out. It opens into what is called the cystic duct which is around 3 to 4 centimeters long and then the cystic duct joins the common hepatic duct over here, right? Let's talk about the common hepatic duct or the common sorry common bile duct. The common hepatic duct plus the cystic duct together forms the common bile duct. It is around 7.5 centimeters long and with respect to its relation to the first part of the duodenum, the common bile duct is divided into four parts and its terminal end has a sphincter system to regulate the bile which is flowing into the second part of the duodenum. Right, so the four parts are supraduodenal, retroduodenal, infraduodenal, and intraduodenal. So let's see them one by one. Now, this is a diagram showing the common bile duct as it passes behind the duodenum. So let's highlight the common bile duct alone. There you have it that is the extrahepatic biliary apparatus with the hepatic ducts, common hepatic the gallbladder and the cystic duct and the common bile duct. Now let's see the relation of the common bile duct to the duodenum. Now there you have it, that is your duodenum and as you can see the common bile duct lies behind the first part of the duodenum. Now what are its parts basically? The part above the first part of the duodenum becomes a supra duodenal part there. Behind the first part of the duodenum you have the retro duodenal part behind, retro meaning behind. Below the duodenum, you have the infraduodenal part. And finally, we have a small part of the common bile duct which is entering into the duodenum and that part which is within the wall of the duodenum, that is called the intraduodenal part. All right. So once more, the supraduodenal part is here, that is around 
an inch long, 2.5 centimeters. The retroduodenal part is the second part. It is lying behind the first part of the duodenum in close association with the first part of the duodenum. The intraduodenal part is this. It is embedded in the pancreatic tissue. So you have to dig through the substance of the pancreas in your dissection classes to bring out or show the third part of the common bile duct. And the intraduodenal part is here and that is the last part of the common bile duct and that is the part which is seen within the wall of the duodenum. Now what are, is the sphincter system of the duodenum? So sorry the common bile duct. So the sphincters are three basically. We have the sphincter cholidocus which is seen around the common bile duct. So coli means bile, docus means duct. So the sphincter cholidocus is that part which is seen around the bile duct, common bile duct. It is also called the sphincter of Boyden. So that is the question for the entrance. Then you have a sphincter around the pancreas, which is called the sphincter pancreaticus. And lastly, we have the sphincter which is projecting into the second part of the duodenum. And that is the sphincter ampullae of Audi or sphincter of Audi. And that forms the major duodenal papilla, which is one of the major features of the second part of the duodenum. So the surgeons have a more complicated sphincter classification mechanism, but for our uh, purposes, I think these three sphincters are the main three sphincters which you should be remembering. Now, a few more things before we go, we stop the end of the video. We have to learn about the cystohepatic triangle, which is also called the Callet triangle, which is a small area located over there, right? So now let's zoom that part and see what are the boundaries of the Callet triangle and why it is important. So let's label the parts. We have the liver over there, that is the gallbladder, and below we have the duodenum. The gallbladder enters via the cystic duct, and next to the cystic duct, we have the common hepatic duct, that is the CHD, all right? So now let's remove that triangle and see the boundaries of the sister hepatic triangle. Okay. Now the superior boundary is the inferior border of the liver. On the right side, we have the cystic duct. And on the left side, we have the common hepatic duct. Now can you see the triangle? That is Callet's triangle. And this is important because of its contents. So the Callet's triangle mainly has this, which is the right hepatic artery as well as the cystic artery, which is a branch of the right hepatic artery. So the cystic artery takes off from the right hepatic artery and supplies the gallbladder. And there is one more thing here, which is the cystic lymph node of Lund, the cystic lymph node of Lund. Now that's a new name, remember that. Now what's the importance of knowing the sister hepatic triangle or the Callet triangle? Basically, this is the approach route for that a surgeon takes to remove the gallbladder the procedure is called a cholecystectomy so as long as the anatomy is normal as in this picture as you can see in this picture we have a normal callet triangle with a normal cystic artery over there everything is fine the surgeon can predict where the cystic artery is and safely remove the gallbladder but in some cases there might be anatomical abnormalities as in this picture if you could see that is the common hepatic artery which is tortuous a tortuous common hepatic artery and that is extending into the callet triangle as you can see there or another variation is this where you have a tortuous right hepatic artery which is sort of bending down into the callet triangle and the cystic artery is comparatively shorter these two are together called a Moynihan's hump abnormality or a caterpillar hump because it looks like a caterpillar. And this situation is dangerous as far as the surgeon is concerned because when you're expecting something as small of a cystic artery as a cystic artery and you ligate it there and you find that it's a huge artery, there's going to be a lot of bleeding. So knowing that such variations do occur in a large percentage of patients will help you in your cholecystectomy. Now, the third thing that you should know is an ERCP. So, that's something students read about in the textbook. What is ERCP and what does it stand for? It is basically endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography and it was one of the most popular diagnostic as well as therapeutic modalities used for a biliary tree abnormality. So, what do you do here? 
we let's label this picture that is the duodenum over there and here we have the pancreas and the pancreatic duct there we have the common bile duct and the gray structure that you see over there that is your side viewing endoscope so the ercp endoscope is a side viewing endoscope which you pass down into the second part of the duodenum and through its side view it locates the ampulla of waiter or the sphincter of audi and passes its probe into the sphincter and into the biliary tree following which it injects a radio opaque water soluble dye which helps you to visualize the biliary tree and you end up with something like this so here you have a side viewing endoscope and then the biliary tree and that is what you get in the case of an ERCP though the ERCP has been majorly replaced by ultrasonography and MRCP which is a magnetic resonance cholangiopancreatography it is still used to locate certain lower biliary tree lesions so that is still useful more or less so that is an ERCP for you and that is the biliary tree and extrahepatic biliary apparatus. In brief, we'll see you in the next class. Thank you.